सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैड स्टार्टेड विद ई पी सी सिलेबस इलेक्ट्रिक प्रिंसिपल एंड सर्किट्स अंडर दैट मॉड्यूल वन आई स्टार्टेड इट ऑलरेडी एंड आई कवर द टॉपिक ऑफ ट्रांसिस्टर बयासिंग ओके सो अंडर दैट ट्रांसिस्टर बयासिंग वी हैव सीन द मेन प्रॉब्लम अंडर बयासिंग सर्किट हाउ द बयासिंग इज बीन डन विद रेस्पेक्ट टू द ट्रांसिस्टर वेर अ ट्रांसिस्टर इज कंसिस्ट ऑफ three terminals emitter base and collector and we have seen that we have two types of transistor mainly npn transistor and pnp transistors okay and under that transistor biasing uh, we have seen one important kind of circuit and one problem related to that that is voltage divider biasing circuit okay how the voltage is getting divided with respect to the currents and uh, what are what and all are the equations formed with respect to the uh, currents and voltages everything we have seen we have made a made a list in that video and we have solved with one simple problem okay so i am not going to brush it up again so in this video we are going to be starting with one more concept that is vdb load line that is voltage divider bias circuits load line what do you mean by its load line and what do you mean by the q point which is associated with the load line okay so what do you mean by the q point load line with respect to the vdb circuit everything i am going to explain you in this video so stay tuned till the end guys please a uh, like share subscribe to our channel those who are new to the channel uh, especially all, those who are studying in currently third sem under btu please guys subscribe to our channel like this video okay before you move further so let us start with the today's concept vdb load line at q point okay so this is one simple vdb circuit they have mentioned here where the vcc value that is the supply voltage value they have given it as plus 10 volt here in this case and this is the collector resistance emitter resistance where this is the variable resistance in this case they have considered it as a 1 kilo ohm variable resistance emitter then this is the these are the two resistor values which gets the divided with respect to this voltage vb and the current flowing through this path is uh, the the current is named as current ib okay ib and uh, these are the currents which are going to flow from the uh, resistors that is uh, ic and ie okay so these are the values given here for r1 r2 10 kilo ohm 2.2 kilo ohm rc is 3.6 kilo ohm and re is 1 kilo ohm with respect to this simple circuit we are going to analyze how the vdb load line is been constructed for this and what and all are the parameters which you need to be knowing it okay so for calculation of the q point with respect to this circuit first you need to be drawing one plot with respect to iv plot okay iv characteristic plot where the plot is of ic that is the collector current versus vce okay vce is collector to emitter voltage that is also called as the cut off voltage okay that cut off voltage why it is named as cut off voltage because it tends towards zero okay the cut off voltage which tends towards uh, the voltage which tending towards zero that is called as the cut off voltage in this case why uh, the voltage is tending towards zero because we have considered one variable resistance in this case okay so that's why if the variable resistance uh, is of 0 uh, kilo ohm then the automatically the voltage would be zero so that's why the cut off voltage would be coming into the picture so and this is the saturated collector current in this in this uh, ic plot we have uh, marked somewhere here okay and uh, this is the cut off voltage vc okay so with respect to these two points we are drawing the straight line here and this straight line which indicates the ic versus vc that is called as the load line okay load line you should be remembering that it is always a straight line which is drawn in the iv characteristic plot and the point which is generated in this load line anywhere okay it, it might be anywhere in the line that point is called as the q point or the bias point or it is also called as quiescent point okay so these are the things which you need to be knowing under load line so let us do the analysis about how these values are coming into the picture so nothing much to do the steps which i have already told you in the previous video that all you apply here and uh, find the value of ic current at vce voltage step by step okay so uh, this is these are the parameters given here you see here from the example 8.1 the q point is calculated which is at the collector current of 1.1 milliamp so this is a collector current mentioned in this case 1.1 milliamps and the collector to emitter voltage is 4.94 volt okay so this is the previous uh, example which i have done in our previous video right so that examples values they have considered it here and they have drawn the q point okay so what whatever, whatever the value of collector current they have mentioned it here in this uh, uh, collector uh, ic plot and you should be remembering that 
the IC is always in terms of milliampere. Okay, in this case, uh, the y-axis IC plot IC is always in terms of milliamps, and this is in terms of volt. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, these values are plotted to get the Q point as shown in this figure. You see here 1.1 milliamps versus 4.94 volt somewhere at around this load line. It would be coming at this point. Okay, and this point is called as the bias point or Q point for the values of ICE and VCE which is mentioned here. Okay, so for different values of IC versus VCE, the Q point would be generated at different uh, stages in the load line. Uh, since the voltage divider bias is derived from the emitter bias, one way to move the Q point of figure 8.6 is by varying the emitter resistor. As I've told you, because they have given one variable resistance here, so we could be moving the Q point in the load line wherever you, we want because there, they have already mentioned one variable resistance in this circuit. Okay, So if you, if you vary that resistance, uh, automatically the emitter uh, resistance value changes the whole calculation steps again it should be repeating and uh, we'll be getting different answers for ic and vce okay so if we get different answers for ic and vce the points would be uh, generated at different uh, uh, at different uh, stages for at in this q uh, load line okay so you see here these are the points in different sections they are mentioned is one is qh and ql qh stands for upper q point and ql stands for lower q point so, for instance, they have taken one uh, simple example you see here. For instance, if the emitter resistance is changed to 2.2 kilo ohm, that is here in this case it was 1 kilo ohm. Now they have changed this to 2.2 kilo ohm. Now let us see what is the values we get. The, col the collector current decreases to IE is equal to 1.1 volt divided by 2.2 kilo ohm. So, IE formula, we have already discussed it. What, what, what is the formula for IE? That is VE by RE, right? So what is VE? How VE is calculated? So 1.1 volt divided by 2.2 kilo ohm, we are getting around 0.5 milliamps. Then the voltages would be changing as follows. That is VC. How VC is calculated? VC is calculated as VCC in VCC minus IC into RC, right? So with respect to that, a 10 volt minus 0.5 milliamps into the collector uh, resistance is 36 kilo ohms, so milli kilo gets cancelled, and uh, our answer is approximately around 8.2 volt. That is for VC. Then VCE is uh, VC minus uh, VE. So VC uh, we have got it as uh, 8.2 volt. VE is 1.1 volt. So if we minus it, we will be getting around 7.1 volt. Therefore, the new Q point will be QL, and we'll have the coordinates 0.5 milliamps and 7.1 volt. That is, we have. IE that is a, we, as I've told you in my previous video IE is approximately equal to IC so that's why this we could be considering it as collector current itself so 0.5 milliamps and 7.1 volts so in this plot you see here 0.5 milliamps should be somewhere here okay it could be somewhere here and 7.1 volt let, let us take it would be somewhere here okay or they have mentioned it QL as here so let us take it here so if you join this here you see at this point the Q point is generated and this is called as QL in this case. Okay. So on the other hand, if we decrease the emitter resistance, that is in this case from 1 kilo ohm, we have increased to 2.2 kilo ohm. So that's why we are getting uh, uh, the Q point down. Whereas if you uh, in, uh, decrease the collector uh, emitter resistance, the Q point would be shifted upwards. Okay. So that's why they are inversely proportional to each other according to Ohm's law what it is r is equal to v by i right so that's why you would be getting inverse values so in this case they have decreased the emitter resistance to 510 ohm in this case if you do the calculation ie that is the collector or the emitter current would be equal to 2.15 milliamps and the vc voltage is 2.26 volt vce voltage we are getting it as 1.16 volt in this case the q point shifts to a new position qh with, with coordinates of 2.15 milliamps and 1.16 volt. So 2.15 milliamps it will be coming somewhere here and 1.16 volt it will be coming somewhere here. So if we join these two here, we would be getting the point somewhere here that is upwards. So that point is named as QH. So with this, in this case, with respect to one variable resistance in the VDB circuit, we could be completely changing the uh, VI characteristic plot with respect to different shifts in the Q 
skew point okay so that's why if you want to check for different values in the vi characteristic plot and if you want to plot different q points in the same load line you should be knowing one thing that is one emitter variable resistance or any variable resistance should be there in the vdb circuit so that you would be getting different q points if you don't have uh, any variable resistance then you would be getting only one single q point in a load line okay so hope this uh, concept is clear to you guys about load line and q points how it is constructed in the vi characteristic plot once again i'm telling vi characteristic plot for uh, uh, plotting the load line and q point is ic versus vce and ic would always be in terms of milliamperes okay whatever the values would be in terms of milliamperes and vce is the cutoff voltage where it tends to zero so that's why we have uh, given the name as cutoff here so that's why we are plotting this here and uh, the q points are plotted in this load line okay so with some simple examples of variation in uh, emitter resistance we have uh, i have tried to explain you the concept of vdb load line and q point so hope this concept is clear to you guys please comment down uh, if you have any kinds of doubts and uh, that's all for this video guys like this video support us and uh, share these videos with your friends neighbors and whosoever you want okay so that's all for the video guys thank you